So simply, um, you know, what is what is CMBS? Um, like I said, it is a, an acronym for Commercial Mortgage Backed Securities. And in a sense, a group like Wharton Gladden Company will originate several loans, several loans, as well as other groups around the country. And then all of our loans are then just pulled together, they're aggregated, they're sent to a rating company like Moody's, S&P, or Fitch, and then they're rated. So these rating companies pour over thousands of data elements in order to figure out how these instruments are going to be rated so they can be sold in the market. So then once they're actually rated, they're sold off to very large investors. Those large investors can be insurance companies, but they can also be pension funds, they can be REITs, um, they can be mutual fund companies, they can even be venture capital companies. And actually, we started to figure out that there were even a lot, lot of corporations that were buying mortgage-backed securities. Companies like Netflix, um, companies like Coca-Cola, all these guys were buying mortgage-backed securities because of the cash flow stream they could see off of it. They have this large amount of money that they need to place in the market, and they found that to be an efficient strategy. This model here just sort of shows a contrast between a traditional lender like Kevin and how they receive their cash flow, and then obviously a CMBS loan and how we receive our cash flow. And at a traditional lender like Kevin's, at Kevin's group, they would have loan A, loan B, loan C, and obviously each one of these loans would generate a cash flow. They would generate a principal and interest payment back to the bank. With the CMBS loan, all of our loans are together. So they generate one large cash flow stream to the investors. So it really minimizes the, 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 the risk of default. Because you could have loan A that gets knocked out of here, but you still have other loans in the pool that are performing that will maintain that cash flow stream to the investors. Loan A gets knocked out of here, they lose that cash flow stream altogether. You see, you see what I mean? So This is what we call the bond waterfall. Um, once all these loans are obviously rated and, and securitized, um, and the CMBS offering is prepared, um, the rating agencies, after they've applied their stress tests and sensitivity models, um, they normally figure out that about 80 to 85 percent, or even in this case, 87 percent of the bond is called what we call investment grade. Um, principal and interest payments typically flow first to the bond investors who purchase the AAA class. So whoever's in that class, that's the safest part of this investment because that's the investment grade portion. So as it starts to cascade, it gets riskier and riskier for whoever's buying into that specific class. Also, as it cascades down, the yields for the investors increase because they're taking on more risk. What you see down here in the NR class, that's what we call the non-rated class. That's the riskiest part of the bond, and it carries the highest yield. If, this, if all this goes wrong, these guys start losing their money first. Those are the guys that are out of their money, and then it works itself back up until you get to the investment grade portion of the, of the bond. Um, groups that will buy into this end of the bond will be typically hedge funds because they like very risky strategies and they normally have the analyst staff there to go over all the data elements. They look at all the properties in that class. They look at all the loans and they feel really comfortable about buying in that end of the, into that end of the bond. Groups that will buy into the more safer portion of the bond will be like money managers who just cannot lose money. Um, so, so they typically will buy into the investment grade portion because they don't want any, any risk.